Well, welcome to Beyond Common Sense. It has been quite the morning. Um, just a whole lot of roadblocks. <laughs> yeah, and so I almost said, forget it. I'm not going to do this. I think I'm supposed to. And I went to Proverbs 16 for some help from the Lord. Because Proverbs 16, verse 1, starts like this. The preparations of the heart belong to man. So I have prepared my heart. I've tried to pray about what to record today. I've tried to decide whether I'm really not even supposed to record today. I'm not exactly sure, but I am pressing on <laughs> because that is what I think I'm supposed to do. Did you ever have a day like this? Lord, show me what it is that you want me to do. Actually, this whole week has been filled with little surprises. Yes, we did have the plan for the week. In fact, um, our time of regrouping is on Monday. That has always been kind of our day off. So we will often get up and say, okay, what's the week look like? Well, Tuesday, I was speaking at a local library on behalf of Spirit Rock because I am now the Indian expert. <laughs> that is absolutely not true. But I've done a lot of research for Spirit Rock about Pennsylvania American Indians and so I was sharing that at the library and that was a great blessing if you were there thank you for coming that was encouraging to me as I continue on this quest of Lord what would you have me to do with these books so that was exciting and God really blessed there he sends so many little encouragements on my way if I would just keep focused on those instead of all of the struggles that he also puts in my way to grow me. So the preparation of the heart, that belongs to us. We prepare our hearts. We think of what we're going to say, what we're going to do for the week, where we're going to go, and that sort of thing. But the second part of the verse says this, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Wow, that's a great promise. We do our best, and then God takes over. Uh, so then verse 2 says this, All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes. We can think a lot of ourselves, can't we? We can think we're pretty good. We can think that we're doing right. That we're doing a pretty good job at this thing called life. But look at the second part of the verse. But the Lord weighs the spirits. Now, I have to admit, my spirit was not very good this morning when I couldn't figure out what to talk about, when because my old computer crashed, I lost everything. And I just found out this morning, I cannot find my music library. I believe that is gone too, which isn't completely gone. I just have to re-record all of my CDs into this computer. So that was really, really frustrating. I've never had to do that before. I really need to learn a little bit more about backing things up. So um, the Lord weighs the spirits. Yeah, my spirit wasn't too good this morning. I will confess that to you. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. And then there's verse three. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. I really depend on that a lot, that verse right there. I commit it to God, and then I have to take my hands off and just let him do with it what he wants to do with it. Hence, this podcast. Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. Why in the world would any of you, anybody in this world, want to hear about my thoughts? Do I have something to say? Oh, yes, I have a lot to say. But if it is not couched in the word of God, it is useless. Is there worldly knowledge that is helpful? Absolutely. Yes. But for this, walking beyond common sense, the only way you can do that is by being focused on God and focused on God's word. Let him establish your thoughts. Let him give you the answers that you need to speak to someone. And then Proverbs 16, 33 is the last verse in this proverb. 
it says this. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. So there you have it again. We cast our lots and God picks the right one. Is that what this verse is saying? Well, yeah, absolutely. That is what it is saying. We cast it into the lap. Um, I still remember years ago, my dear mother-in-law, um, when we only had six of the grandchildren with her and she had five pieces of some dessert or some candy or something. And so she took straws and she had them draw straws and somebody got a short straw and they didn't get anything, which if I remember correctly, those cousins all shared with the person that didn't get any. That was totally off script. But the casting of the lots, doing something by chance, <laughs> there is no chance with God. Even those decisions are from the Lord. Do you play the lottery? I hope not. But if you do, God will choose that one too. Yeah, there's nothing left to chance. He directs our thoughts. He establishes our way and he knows every decision that we make. I hope that's an encouragement to you today. Maybe someone there is trying to make a decision and you really don't know which way to go. Hey, we are in the throes of a major decision in our life. And right now, guess what? That path is completely obliterated. It's not there. But I recently read a quote that said this, prayer is the path when there is none. And I had to think about that for a while. It's the path that is not there. You're traveling out in unknown territory. You're trusting God. And right now we have no answer. We have no direction whatsoever. So we're just going to stop trusting the Lord. Is that what it is? That's what we're going to No, That's not what we're doing. We're going to just keep praying. And one of these days it will become clear. When the answer comes, finally, and we have some direction to move on, I love it. Psalm 126 says this, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then we said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. I just love that. We, we just put our hands to our mouth in astonishment and say, wow, look what God did. Back in 2006, when we were doing the Abraham thing, we basically literally went out not knowing where we were going. And God put us to the test for several months. We always claimed the verse that Noah said at the Red Sea, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And when God parted the Red Sea in our situation, he opened the path and made it clear. It was quite amazing to watch. It happened quite quickly and it was exciting. Will he do that again? Yeah, maybe not with so much fanfare, but I do know this. I can trust him. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your steps. Yes, I've got new music. If you noticed that in the beginning, that's another whole story. But I'm hoping that this podcast is a blessing to someone out there. It would be a blessing to me, an encouragement. If this has been a blessing to you, that you would share that with me. Hey, maybe you could hit the like button. I think there's a like button there somewhere. I really should know more about what I'm doing before I'm doing this. But, you know, sometimes you just got to press on. Hey, thanks for listening and have a good and godly day.